Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Digital Life TV. I'm your host, Patrick Norton, and we're gonna we have an amazing show lined up for you today. First of all, joining me. Robert Heron is going to be co-hosting PC Mag analyst and HDTV expert extraordinaire. Hey, Pat. I heard you missed the NASCAR race. This week. One I of the did. NASCAR races well, this weekend. I caught the end of the Bush race and I the missed the, the entire next cup, Nextel Cup race. So. so how many races are left in the season? About a dozen. A little About over a dozen. A dozen exactly at this point. So I've got a few more weeks to still catch up and make it all the way to the end of the... So I'm impressed. I figured you would have just downloaded a BitTorrent of the race. That's a, that's a, I'm probably going to end up doing that after I go <laughs> home and immediately program my TiVo properly to record these things. It's oh, just, man. So basically your no TiVo's excuses. blinking no 12. It's like, ah, oh, Sunday <laughs> afternoon, what am I going to do? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just going to ignore everything on TV. And oh, man. We got some good stuff coming up the show. Game Boy Micro, check this out. The uh, next generation of the Game Boy Advance, essentially, the little portable one. We're going to actually talk about this a little later on the show. We got a 9995 laser printer. Nice. From Dell coming up, which is really cool. Biggest thing, though, I think I think we got to do a nomination. Though we're gonna before we talk about the news, we should get into the people are scum department because like I got somebody tried to nuke me this weekend on eBay, and what's really amazing is be careful, right? Hurricane Katrina, horrible stuff going on in New Orleans, horrible horrible stuff going on in New Orleans, and there are scammers going berserk. They're, and the phishing sites are basically phishing emails are trying to grab your credit card information. People are creating fake websites, fake PayPal accounts. It Be sounds really careful. Like shades of 9-11 all over again. It's amazing, like, like you know. It's, in terms of the scamming, it seems to take place right after, right after a national tragedy. Which is which unbelievably is, sleazy. It seems to happen more often than we like to admit. And I don't know, I've become so jaded over the email spam I receive right. that I, I take everything with a grain of salt at this point. And any, any kind of online correspondence. <laughs> Welcome back after our, well, our first major live on-air crash. A lot of you have asked us what we're actually using to produce this little extravaganza we call Digital Life TV. And I like to say, well, a lot of stuff, it's a little more on the, yeah, actually, can we have some duct tape over here? We've duct taped our, our system back together. It's we not actually, even real duct tape. Yeah, it's not even real tape. duct tape. We're, <laughs> we're a low rent off. That's cold, man. Oh, can, can we get the gaffer's tape gaffer's over tape. here? Anyhow, uh, gaffer's tape concrete. Is, is fancy TV duct tape that's easy to take off, actually. My point being is what we just did is relaunched our new tech, TriCaster, which is the heart of our live television production system. I don't know, can we get a, a close-up shot of that? Let's pull the camera here. Rob, our beloved cameraman, is going to pull in. New Tech is an amazing company to engineer some, some of the most incredible video products on the planet, one of which you see in the upper left-hand corner. There. That's our TriCaster box. We use that to switch live television. So this $5,000 box essentially replicates all the stuff you would see in one of those big trucks you see parked outside of every sporting event that gets televised, right? It's an amazing deal. Instead of spending a half million, three million dollars on a truck, we use a little tiny customized shuttle case with some amazing code inside of it written by New Tech to switch our live program, to add in our stills, our lower thirds, all the, the screens, basically everything you see for a normal television studio is in our little tiny magic box. Running on Windows. Running on Windows <laughs> XP. And for all of those out there, and I can, I can, I can ah. smell the emails coming to digitallifetv at ziffdavis.com. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it runs on Windows, and sometimes Windows eats its own tail and goes down. So we just had a little sh dark shot of the new tech over there, the TriCaster box. Anyhow, we love our new tech TriCaster, but in case you were wondering why we just suddenly stopped broadcasting to all 40 or 60,000 of you in the middle of a live broadcast, um, we want to say those numbers are growing weekly. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's because our box crashed, and hopefully it's going to stay up and running again. Anyhow, Robert and I were about to go into the news. I'm going to toss the duct tape back to Rob, and I didn't hit him in the nose this time, which is a big plus. Actually, nice. I'm going to give him the masking tape, there too. There you go. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> in the news today, a lot of crazy stuff. And by the way, if you, if you missed us earlier, we talked about two things. Don't get scammed on eBay, which we'll talk about more next week when we find out whether or not I'm getting ripped off. Sounds like it. Yeah, well. At least you were aware and did some due diligence and checked I'm, up on it before you actually laid down the money. Yeah, it's That's all about the, the escrow right now, and it's all about an escrow system that actually works. Good deal. There's one recommended by eBay. Check it out. <laughs> Intel responds to AMD's antitrust suit. What's up with that? Like, what, six or nine weeks ago, AMD basically lays out a huge 50-page, you know, brief, launches a lawsuit against Intel, basically as an, anti, an antitrust or anti-competitive. What are they calling that? 
A little bit of both, actually. They're claiming that, and according to several sources, that whenever they make deals with chip, uh, people who actually build the systems that their chips go into, right. that they actually PC include... Vendors. Yeah, PC vendors. That they include wording as such that they end up saying, well, look, if you want our chips at this price, mm -hmm. we ask that you limit the amount you purchase from our competitors, namely right. AMD. And that's where AMD has said, you know what? And according to the Japanese Trade Commission a couple months ago, they did find some evidence to that very case. Right. So, but immediately, Intel comes back and says, you know what? AMD hasn't spent the money that we did on chip production, and they right. can't simply keep up with demand. The and claims then, are wah, wah, spurious. Wah. They're whining. They should have built four more fabrication facilities. It's, it's tough being a... Uh, the attorneys are having a blast with this because they'll go back and forth <laughs> for years and probably never come to any agreement or they'll all just eventually just shuffle their way. So you and I are probably never going to benefit, but some lawyers are going to be having some fat rides out of this one. Who else? Who oh, else? man. Anyhow, it's going to be interesting to watch. Intel response is up. You can read those online if you want. I just want to see AMD get out there with more mobile parts or right. a mobile part that can seriously compete against what with uh, AMD's or Intel's currently They're best. getting better. They are. They're getting better. That was amazing that's, numbers. That's a one sector that Intel really has locked up hard is everything yeah. that goes into notebooks right now. Which is kind of the future. Yep. Smaller, Interesting thought. Lighter, cooler. Number two, Samsung plans on dual standard DVD player, which is not actually a DVD player like we think of it right now, but it's a next generation high definition DVD player that will run both HD DVD and Blu-ray DVD, which is interesting because... Samsung is firmly in the Sony Blu-ray DVD camp. And it seems like more and more content providers and owners are heading that direction right. as well. Also, this month we also learned that Toshiba is pushing back the launch of HD DVD until sometime next year, mm -hmm. which means this Christmas when we're supposedly going to have 70 titles in HD DVD and the players to go with that. Wow. Nada. So <laughs> as far Oops. as your high-definition recordable stuff, wait till next year. But as far as the multi format right. players go, we saw a couple of designs at CES this year, earlier this year, that showed multiple pickups, it's being a, able to support not only both formats, right. but in, in addition to like Dash plus DVD recordable media and it's, CD media as well. It's a non-trivial engineering effort because they have to have two separate heads. Because uh, yes. the AC DVD is backwards compared different to DVD, different wavelengths of light being used for the, different two, for mm -hmm. the two different formats. The other thing is, but once the design is finished, right. it becomes a commodity part at that point. The, the, the hard part is done. It was right. built. They can keep shrinking it and optimizing it and pumping it out cheaper and cheaper as time goes on. So, so basically $2,000 you know, in January, $50 in Walmart by June. Uh, Probably I, I, not that fast. I think the media prices <laughs> might follow that track, but <laughs> we'll see. It's going to be interesting. Number three, iPod, video iPod or iPod phone. We love Steve Jobs and Apple's reality distortion machine. We love getting caught up in the events. Big deal tomorrow, big announcements, deep secret from the folks at Apple, a new announcement that's going to be even bigger than the iPod. And Basically, we're 90% positive that the major announcement is that Singular is going to be the carrier of the iPod phone from Motorola, the iTunes compatible phone from Motorola. Woo freaking who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. This is about as exciting to me as the Mighty Mouse was. So, what if they announce? I mean, because it's interesting. Because Steve Jobs didn't go to the the Apple Expo in Paris. He's he's here in town to to, to cheer the event on tomorrow. Do you, Apple Video any chance for a video iPod tomorrow? Do we think? I have no clue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. I should probably should ask myself that yeah. question. Do you because want the video iPod? Do you I mean, need a I'm video I'm sitting here, iPod? I'm like, wait a minute. Like a portable my media player? in my back pocket because yeah. it's, you know, it's not just a music player. It's a, it's a memory drive. stick. <laughs> <laughs> With it's a couple extra thought. buttons. It's an interesting thought. We don't know what's coming up. So they could change the world tomorrow or it could be a really expensive phone running on Singular. I mean, what's, I mean, is it just so you can support the encrypted music formats that are offered by iTunes when you yeah. buy Paid Let's just content. say the phone better have a lot of memory on it. That or a media card slot for up to, you know, say four gigs of flash memory, which that pr the prices of flash memory are dropping significantly. So I really just need a good multi-formatted music player for my phone and a little <laughs> GPS device. And, that'd be sad. and the ability to play Game Boy Advance games. I'm telling you, that, that thing is cute. We're going to actually, we have the Game Boy Advance on the show. If you, if you, you know, caught us after the system crash a little early ago that involved our New Tech TriCaster, our beloved switching box from NewTech.com, which we love but died or Windows XP, our favorite operating system underneath it died. Nope. Not that I'm bitter. Anyhow. <laughs> Stick a cell phone in that thing. That's what I want. Oh, man. I like That'd that product. Perfect. Yeah, I can see you just, like, on uh, the train. Just some decent controls on a cell phone. The cell phones have enough power to play games. It's just the controls suck. So <laughs> that's, that's half the problem. At least now you can hit two buttons at once on most cell phones. The new cell phones, anyway. Right. That used to be a big deal. So yeah, but instead of using the really horrible thumb button in the middle. Yeah, yeah my, cell, I, my cell phones are all too cheap to play games. 
Anyhow, it's viewer question. Don from Alameda, California. Hello. We have a, Don, are you out there? There it is, Don. I'm running anti-spyware. I have been for months. Why am I suddenly getting pop-ups like I did before I installed the anti-spyware software? Let me see if I can actually pull it up here. It sounds like, Don, you're not doing updates. And you can tell this is my personal desktop because of the uh, incredible collection of icons on wow. it. Wow. Robert's going to pass out in fear and horror. Let's actually go in here. This is LavaSoft. <laughs> <laughs> Same basic concept, no matter which spyware you're working. It's kind of like antivirus software if you're not updating it regularly with new definitions. So let's click over here. In the case of Adware, it's this crazy little icon in the upper right-hand corner that's got the little globe up here. I'm going to click on that, and it's going to launch an update. Updates are incredibly important. If you don't regularly, oh, good, I am updated. Yay, isn't that exciting? So I'm going to start a spyware scan in the background here for fun. If I don't regularly update, my anti-spyware software, my antivirus software, it essentially becomes months, and I've actually seen the worst I've seen is somebody who installed SpyBot once, eight and a half months later, had never updated, and like, I, I run SpyBot every day, and it's like, if you don't update it every couple of days, it has, there's thousands and tens of thousands of new pieces of spyware that it won't be ready to fight. You have to, you have to keep that kind of software updated. And the other thing, too, is you might have something seriously taking over your system that these programs aren't even aware of yet, like, hijacked utilities and things like that. And hijack right. this is one of those utilities, I say, just run in addition to things like SpyBot Search and Destroy and Add Aware. And do you like, I mean, do you like hijack this? It always seems a little like I have to know what I'm doing with the registry or else I'll erase my ability to print or something. I, I think the ultimate solution is make sure you've backed up all your data and be prepared to reinstall Windows. That's really the only way to get rid of some of these things. It's it's just horrible how badly you can have a system taken over, even by simply going to the wrong website nowadays with a with a browser that hasn't been updated you can run into problems with some of the scripts now people are able to generate. And it's pretty scary. Plow their way right into your system and raise all sorts of non-good things. Virgin.org, it's a good one. Hijack this is another one for a day to go. We're going to uh, yeah. take it to a commercial break right now. we got the Game Boy Micro coming up. we got a 99.95 laser printer from Dell. And we're going to tell you all about uh, all sorts of good stuff right after this break. Every month, the editors at Ziff Davis see dozens, maybe even hundreds, of cool products. Well, the best of them get posted to GearLog. You can find out about them as quickly as we've reviewed them, and sometimes when they've just been announced. GearLog is organized with A to Z categories. We have automotive, we have things about power and light, preparedness, outdoors, computers, desktops, laptops. We have gaming, we have music, we have iPod, we have apples, we have weather stations. If it's anywhere in fun consumer electronics, the kind of stuff we buy because we want to spend our own money, that's what you'll find at GearLog. It's only the good stuff. No losers, only cool personal electronics and computers at GearLog.com. Welcome back to DigitalLifeTV.com. I'm your host, Patrick Norton. Joining me, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Heron. And the hey. gentle sound you hear below you is Dell's 1100. The new, basically, it's a laser printer that costs under $100, $99.95. Nice. That's the, like, probably, it's a, probably the first laser printer under $100. And it's, the print quality is amazing. The equivalent for, of... For a brand new printer, yeah. 100 bucks is a great price for that. It's an incredible price. Actually, actually this is my own personal example. I bought this one. I use it at home. It's, uh, you know, I could hold up this white sheet of paper, but you'd probably all scream with pain when the uh, flash boomed in the back. But check out the print quality. Print quality is amazing, and it's actually pretty fast. It's got a Samsung engine inside of it, which is why it looks a lot like a Samsung printer. I was going to say. And it's uh, 15 pages per minute. Uh, test out actually is fast. The uh, PC Mag Labs actually did the benchmarks on it. Test out is fast actually as some uh, laser printers that are rated at 18 pages per minute. Pretty good concept. Pretty good down to four point type pretty much the equivalent of newspaper quality on your photos. And let me pop this open. This is the exciting part here. Let me slide it back so you can see it. So it comes with a kind of an interesting toner cartridge. New toner cartridges are $65. So the initial one that you get inside the box is good for 1,000 pages. All the ones you buy after that are good for 2,000 pages. What about the Econo <laughs> print mode? Can you squeeze out any more? Is that 1,000 with the Econo mode even? You know, I've, I've yet to experiment with the Econo <laughs> mode. It's rated for about three and a quarter cents per page, which is pretty good for a home laser printer. Not bad at all. Uh, not bad at all. 150 page paper tray. So if you print out like 300 pages per day, this might not be enough paper for you. 
The nice thing about Samsung designs too is that the printer cartridge that contains the uh, the toner itself mm -hmm. and the roller or the drum that's used to actually transfer the image to the paper. Right. They're both replaced when you replace the toner cartridge itself, and yeah. sometimes that's two separate costs on some printers. Granted, it sounds like it's more Pull money. It, it, it can we be if you're buying a thousand yeah. sheet ones, but essentially is every time you replace that, you're you're installing a brand new print system. Is that, is that, is that, I can't remember. Is it the drum, the green part? I can never remember. Yes. That's essentially what picks up the electrostatic charge and then transfers it to the paper. Pretty simple, pretty bomb-proof so far. The uh, graphics aren't bad. It's also print quality is outstanding. The footprint of that printer, too, is exceptionally small. That would sit on top of, I think, like a file cabinet even, or definitely out of the way, diminutive. We like it. It's fast. It's incredibly cheap, and you should get about you know that first that, that first cartridge upgrade is going to be the worst. Two hundred cartridge for sixty five bucks. Um, occasionally, it will pick up two sheets, although uh, two sheets at once. You have a blank sheet in the middle of what you're doing. If it does that, Dell says if it bothers you, they will return it. Uh, you can return it for a full exchange. I like it. It's a pretty good deal. I'm more of a fan of the printers that allow you to print on both sides or the duplex printers so you can save paper. That's how much how thing. much will how well you could actually run it through a second time on this. That's true, but that's a lot of manual work and then you'd have to split it up into an even and odd pages. What's the last duplex is there a duplex like paper that. pager printer that's under five hundred now? Oh yeah. Really? Definitely. I, it might even be a Samsung model I was looking at. It was about four fifty was like a year ago, mm -hmm. so I'm thinking it might even be cheaper now. Granted those are more so for, for work. Approximately four times the price of my hundred dollar laser printer. This is true. So cheap but I'm people using like less me. paper. <laughs> <laughs> or you can feed the paper through twice. We're going to talk about good. Apparently there's a lot more to be learned in the whole laser printer department for me. We had another viewer question. Dave from Georgia. I'm adding an external drive in the XP home media box. Is Firewire better than USB? Yes. He's got a couple more questions. <laughs> yes. Why is Firewire better? I know that Firewire is better than USB because it came from Apple, therefore it must be good. Well. I'm joking. Actually, uh, USB is essentially USB 2.0. They're about the same in terms of speed of transferring stuff. Back wise, you're talking 480 megabit versus 400 megabit for mm -hmm. Firewire. So you could say technically on paper that USB 2 has a slight speed advantage. In real world practices, right. you're going to find that they're about the same. It's more the, dependent on the performance of the drive that you're using anyway. Right. But latency and overhead, CPU overhead in particular. USB 2.0, not good. Yeah, because it's a, it's a host-client relationship with USB, mm -hmm. whereas with FireWire, you have the same hardware on both ends, which makes it a more expensive way FireWire to FireWire is actually more of a networking. I, instead of like USB, actually, it's more in common with like a serial ATA drive. In, well, in very loose analogous terms. Gotcha. Extremely loose. But for performance, I, I, I like FireWire personally. Mm -hmm. It's easy. It runs. But for inexpensive, you can usually get just a USB 2 only enclosure mm -hmm. or something along those lines cheaper than you could a, fire, a similar FireWire unit. Right. Of course, if you're going to build that drive yourself, they make some great enclosures that include both. Mm -hmm. And it also scale up to even now FireWire 800, which doubles that speed up to 800 megabit or which is nice. whatever that works yeah. out to be. It sounded like Dave from his email is mostly going to be using these for watching. But basically, he's run out of storage on his main hard drive in his media system, uh, his, his uh, XP Media Center edition to watch videos. He needs an external storage. 7200K versus 10,000K, I don't think he's going to see any performance difference. In terms of definitely maybe copying files to it, you might get a tiny boost. Just buying the latest generation of drive, regardless of its speed, is going to mm -hmm. offer improvements in performance. Uh, one being that the, as the density of the platter even right. increases, that's going to improve performance. The electronics and how, how they are in terms of just generating throughput, mm -hmm. they improve yearly. So even even if you have a 7200 RPM drive now, if you went out and bought a brand new one, that's it, it should run faster for any of it. They generally of do. They keep they keep inching it up, and yeah, I don't think you'd have to worry. I don't think you need 10,000 RPM for an external drive at this point. If you were editing, I can't. Yeah, if you were editing video and you're capturing to the maybe inside the system or in a RAID configuration, and I've even seen external RAID FireWire setups too, mm -hmm. with, used with notebook editing solutions, and you know you can you can take it as far as you want, but for backing up your media. Firewire works fine. USB yeah. 2 is probably cheaper, and it, you know what? It's it's going to work okay yeah. as long as you don't need either that, one will that work. Snappy performance, but if you want to know you have the superior performance, go with Firewire. And you can always use it to network. We like that thought. Yeah. All right, Dave. Thanks for the question, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to cut out for a quick commercial break. When we come back, all sorts of exciting stuff, especially Nintendo's Game Boy Micro, the latest tiniest little Game Boy ever. Corey Padnos, and I'm here to ask you what you like best about OneUp.com. 
Well, the best thing about 1UP, I would have to say, is meeting everyone across the world who likes games as much as I do. Well, they got a lot of things. One, they got a cool scoring system in which I'm a supreme knight right now. I've got about 300,000 points, so that rocks. It's also a great community. I mean, there's so many different video gamers. I like the fact that there's a whole big community of people that actually care about you. It's not just about points. What's your name? James Lee. And what's your favorite thing about 1UP? Uh, you get to talk to um, all the editors and... Um, and look at all the games, but it's not as good as this cake. I'd like to say the community members. There's some real cool people out here. I like showing off my big video game collection. What's your name? My name is Che. And what do you like best about 1UP? I get to meet all the hot chicks. It's on the internet. It really is a fantastic place to be. Welcome back to Digital Life TV. I'm your host, Patrick Norton. This is the tiniest Game Boy ever. Actually, you know, let's let's pull Robert over here. Our cameraman's going to come over and get some tight shots of this. This thing is incredibly tiny. It's essentially a little baby Game Boy Advance. It's called the Game Boy Micro. It's going to be on sale September 19th. It's going to cost $99.95. And actually, I mean, essentially, you remember the old uh, Nintendo controls? This is probably smaller than the original. It feels almost smaller than the original Nintendo control. Beautiful backlit, full-color screen in there, which looks horrible because I'm in one of the cloud backgrounds. And they're going to find out exactly how little I've played Mario in my entire adult life because I've forgotten every move inside of the system. Good, clear color screen, which looks a lot better when you're up close to it. The full controls are in there, and of course the start and the select buttons are down here. But I'm going to flip this over real quick. It's got an internal battery, which is giving you about nine and a half hours of battery life, so pretty close to the Game Boy Advance. And there we go. The classic Game Boy Advance cartridges are inside of there. And what's interesting, it will not play the DS, the dual screen Game Boy cartridges, which is kind of a shame, which means no Nintendogs on your little baby Game Boy Micro. But it's not, I mean, it's not a dual screen device anyway. No, so. it's not. But I want to have Nintendogs everywhere I go. I hear you. They'll make the version. Karen's into that concept. Anyhow, <laughs> we got reviews up on the website. This one's going to ship September 19th. I'll even turn the power button back on. What was the price on that again? $99.95. This is going to be, everybody on the planet's going to start carrying these around. So, it's $99, $99.95, no Nintendogs. No DS games, but all of your favorite Game Boy Advance games are going to work in there. Yeah, if they stuck a decent cell phone in there, I'd buy it. You see, you're obsessed <laughs> with the cell phone in the Game Boy Micro. <laughs> Anyhow. One device, dang it. Good headphone jack. I want my PSP to have a cell phone in it. There you Anyhow. go. Anyhow. I actually want my PSP to have better games available for it and the ability to do full-scale video, but we'll get into that angry little rant later on. Ship September 19th. Links to the review up at digitallifetv.com. What do we got coming up next? I'm trying to think. Can well. We back out of there? Oh, we got another viewer question. <laughs> Silly me. Hey, why don't you offer Digital Life TV and 8.264, QuickTime, or PSP format, or BitTorrent, or eDonkey downloads? How about iTunes video listings? Lots of people from all over. I say that because we get like 15 email questions every day. There are questions all over the place. The questions all over the place. Well, I was condensing like oh, 75 okay. <laughs> questions I've gotten in the last four days into one thing. Everybody wants different formats, and we want to get you different formats right now. We've got our TriCaster box given us WMV. We're working on different formats to re-encode it into. Hopefully tomorrow we'll have Flash up because Flash, whether you like it or not, Flash video is the easiest to play pretty much on in terms of us setting it up. <laughs> in terms click of a link, video click pops a link, up. video pops up. We're working on a format for that on, across the Macs and PCs and Linux. They claim it's like 99.99% .99 of the planet who has a computer can play Flash video. We'll get into that whole discussion on another show. We are working on a QuickTime version and an H.264, and we are going to work on using BitTorrent to distribute it because, frankly, we don't want to pay for all the bandwidth on some of this stuff. Right now, we're spending a bunch of time working out our different codecs and our production. As we get those on, they're all going to be available at digitallifetv.com. We're actually going to have an archive section up on the right. We're, we're, we're using a lot of new tools here. We're working about as fast as we can. But yes, we will have different formats available. Some of the more obscure ones we're probably 264 not going to go for. 264 takes days to code in. It's so slow right now. <laughs> you try, to, you try to get the maximum quality out of that. It, it, you're going to sit there for 10 times longer than you would wow. using some of the more optimized formats out there. They've got to get busy with that. What we need, actually, what we need is a Linux server farm. So we're, eventually, we're going to have multiple <laughs> formats. We're definitely going to have Flash in the near future. We have Broadcast WSB quality now. encoders. That's what we need real time. Now, hey, you know what? You give me a check for seventeen thousand dollars, I can get you a box that does amazing things with this. Is video. true? 
Anyhow, yes, we are working on it. And for all those of you who asked, we are going to start stripping out the audio and doing a podcast format of it, and that will actually be available tomorrow. The WMV version of this is going to be later on tonight. And uh, later on Wednesday, we'll have various other encoded formats available for your download. If we don't, it's because one of our machines crashed again, and I'll be sitting in a corner kicking a filing cabinet, because that's what I do. Anyhow, we're going to cut to another commercial break. Valve, Steam, Half-Life 2, what's the story about the future of your favorite video game? We're going to give you the answers right after this quick little break. The best prices on high-tech gadgets, shop.pcmag.com. Shop.pcmag.com lets you find, compare, and buy anything in seconds. Whether you're looking for a digital camera, computer components, or a new HD TV, you'll find everything you want at shop.pcmag.com. Shop.pcmag.com lets you compare prices from dozens of sites. No hidden charges, no hassles. Shop.pcmag.com to save cash. It's a source you can trust. Every month, the editors at Ziff Davis see dozens, maybe even hundreds, of cool products. Well, the best of them get posted to GearLog. You can find out about them as quickly as we've reviewed them, and sometimes when they've just been announced. GearLog is organized with A to Z categories. We have automotive, we have things about power and light, preparedness, outdoors, computers, desktops, laptops. We have gaming, we have music, we have iPod, we have apples, we have weather stations. If it's anywhere in fun consumer electronics, the kind of stuff we buy because we want to spend our own money, that's what you'll find at GearLog. It's only the good stuff. No losers, only cool personal electronics and computers at GearLog.com. <laughs> It's okay, I got it. Welcome back to Digital Life TV. I'm your host, Patrick Norton. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a fan of Half-Life and Half-Life 2.0, I got a treat for you. Darren Gladstone, Senior Editor of Computer Gaming World, joins us right now to give us a scoop on the future of, should we call it that, the, the Half-Life Entertainment Complex, the Half-Life 2 point something? It's kind of weird because you, you can't really call it uh, Half-Life 2.5 or it, basically Half-Life 2 is just going to keep evolving from this point. So there's no, there's no distinct Half-Life 3, Half-Life 4, Half-Life 5. Actually, when, when we went up to their offices recently to hang out with them, they, they, they laid it out saying that basically the source engine is just going to keep evolving because the way Steam works, it's always online. And well, let's, let me take a step oh. back. Or let me actually, so you guys went up, you had a powwow with Valve. Yeah. Those are the people who make Half-Life 2. Mm -hmm. And they, what's the, okay, so Steam. Explain to me what Steam is, because you started mentioning that a couple right. seconds ago. Right. Um, well, basically, Steam started off as part of, you know, a Counter-Strike mod, mm -hmm. uh, well, part of the ability to basically play a game online. Right. And removing, well, I mean, not, not fully removing, but basically taking the game out of the stores. Instead of having to, like, buy a game on, uh, at a store, you can download the entire thing. No more box, no more trip to retail. Exactly. And so it's all going to be about you. So essentially, you have to have a broadband connection to download, play, and, and take advantage of the enhancements. Right. The you, you can still buy it in stores, of course, mm -hmm. but the, like their whole vision of the future is having a game that you, that will constantly up evolve. Episodic content was what mm -hmm. it's all about, really. So Aftermath, I guess, is the next episode, and Lost Coast? Well, um, they're, they're two very different things. Lost right. Coast, if you want to like talk, okay, if you're looking at it in, like a, say, a book form, uh -huh. um, Half-Life 2 is a book. Right. Um, the Lost Coast is a free, like a short story you're going to find okay. in a magazine. A and teaser? A t exactly. Well, it's a technology teaser. Basically, that, that's part of what the Source Engine does. So, for example, they're including high dynamic range lighting mm -hmm. in this game. They didn't have that in the original Half-Life 2. So what happens is, if you download The Lost Coast, which is this free level, you can tech t test out this new technology, and it's a part of your game. You, you got it for free. So what's going on with uh, with, so with Lost Coast? The short story is Aftermath, another novel. It's or? it's another episode of a TV show, or you know, it's another episode. It's actually it's like a series, it's like yeah, a radio actually, serial where yeah, it just goes on much. and on and on. And and, that, and that's kind of the idea of like, like a lot of people have been trying this idea, but no one's actually like fully implemented it yet. Mm -hmm. And I think Valve is probably one of the companies that's furthest along in the process. Instead of buying an expansion pack, you're just getting uh, like maybe spend fifteen dollars mm -hmm. or whatever. They haven't finalized all the pricing yet, but. Imagine every three months you get a new episode of a game as opposed to a TV show or something. So are you, is there going to be a monthly charge for online gaming? Is, are they going to charge you for each of these enhancement packs? Well, I mean, will the old ones still function at the end of your three-month period? Well, I mean, well I mean, that, that, that's two different kind of pricing models. I mean, okay. there's, the, there's the MMO, like you know, a World of Warcraft, where you pay 15 bucks a month and right. you just 
That's your that's your addiction. You keep playing that. <laughs> Fifteen bucks a month, all the sleep you can avoid, amass the objects, kill the neighbors in digital pixelated format. That's right, and don't forget the wife, or <laughs> try not to at least. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but then you have uh, this where it's going to be, um, imagine every three months you pay that $15 and you have a, well, it, it could be a standalone couple levels worth of a game. That's a really cool thought. It, exactly. Do you, the, the, I mean, essentially, it's, this is a hyped up first person shooter. Yeah, I mean, the, and the I say that with love, not not <laughs> to take away from it. <laughs> well, and I'm not dissing, I'm not dissing it, but I mean, the the, the graphics are getting amazing. Do, are they going to keep enhancing the engine of the game as it goes along? Well, yeah, actually, that's what the first step, this first free level is, mm -hmm. the Lost Coast, uh, high dynamic range lighting. The the best example of that is, let's say you're uh, walking, running down a corridor, and it's dark, and you run, you go from there out into the open sunlight. In the real world, you'd squint. You right. know, it's, you have to eye, your eyes have to adjust. You, you get overwhelmed for a well, second, exactly. and then your retinas, or, or, your, retinas and, your irises, and start to close down. And that happens here. So mm -hmm. basically, they're kind of conveying all these graphical, you know, s you know special effects. They're incorporating this back, you know, back into the engine. Mm -hmm. So it'll work with Half Life Two now. It'll oh, work. Cool. With, so basically, so, so basically, like, they're constantly upgrading, updating the engine for you, and it's and like they'll try out new things, and if it doesn't work, they'll just pull it right out. That's a really wild concept. What is, is if, if somebody says, you know, Valve, Half-Life 2, Sin, what's the Sin part of that? Well, you see, actually, yeah, it's, it's kind of a fascinating thing that I've been following for a little bit. So, if you, you know, turning back the clock to, say, 90, I think it was 96, mm -hmm. if I'm not going crazy, uh, Sin, Epis uh, Sin was a game made by Ritual, and mm -hmm. it came out at basically within days of, ha of the original Half-Life. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, fast four years later, uh, this, you know, company out of Texas, they're basically trying to do, uh, they're, they're coming back to their original game, and it's, it's actually kind of fun because Valve is now becoming a publisher in their own right. right. Instead, of you being able, instead of you going to a store to buy um, the next Sin, right. they're, they're envisioning the entire game as episodic content. So That sits on top of the it, Steam? So basically you have the Steam, this little app that's on your desktop, and, it tr and you can basically Order up a new episode. That's really cool. So, and they, they've told me that they plan on making these uh, sin episodes. Each episode is standalone. Mm -hmm. Again, about 15, 20 bucks. They haven't got the pricing down yet. Is the module primarily going to be for, for online group play? Or are they going to be single person stories? Or That's a good question. It's, they're focusing or is mostly it just, is on. Is it all just evolving at this point? It's, it's all evolving. They're definitely focusing on a single player campaign right mm -hmm. now. It's mostly the story, is what it's all about. I guess that makes it more compelling than just sure. kind of, you know. Ooh, yeah. we've got you know. Ba yeah, basically, right now they're they're they're, they're laying it out like uh, like the TV show Lost. Like mm -hmm. It's an a serialized show, so you want to you want to keep coming back every couple months for that next little bit of the show. Mm -hmm. But the interesting part about wh what Steam's doing is it's actually operating in the background. You, you can opt into it if you mm -hmm. want, and it can pull your experience. So let's say you killed a character, or you didn't like him, or whatever. It tallies those votes, kind of like a, a Nielsen so rating, funny. I guess. So basically. Uh, you know, the people at Valve and Ritual can say, oh, they don't like this guy, let's write him out of the story. Or they'll it's say... a really funny form of audience participation. Exactly. Engaging. So if, if a level really works and people really get into it and they try different mm -hmm. things, they'll, they'll see that and try to, like, make more of that in the future. Good stuff. So this is the cover article on the current edition of Computer Gaming World. Yep. Huge, huge set of articles. And actually, segments of the interviews are available up on the website. Yeah, we actually created, uh, we, we worked with 1up.com very closely. Mm -hmm. So if you go to valve.1up.com, you can see a lot of video content and complimentary articles. I like it. So uh, one of my favorite things, actually, is uh, Gary's Mod. Mm -hmm. It basically is like a Tinker Toy set and Machinima. So you can basically create your own movies inside of the, the Valve engine. Very the cool. The source engine, rather. Darren, excellent information. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Gladstone, Computer Gaming World Senior Editor. Good stuff. We're going to have more from him coming up in the next few weeks. Right now, though, we're going to cut to a commercial break. And after that, one last viewer question. So if you type fast, it might be your viewer question. Send them to us at digitallifetv at ziffdavis.com. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Corey Padnos, and I'm here to ask you what you like best about 1UP.com. Well, the best thing about 1UP, I would have to say, is meeting everyone across the world who likes games as much as I do. Well, they got a lot of things. One, they got a cool scoring system, in which I'm a supreme knight right now. I've got about 300,000 points, so that rocks. It's also a great community. I mean, there are so many different video gamers. I like the fact that there's a whole big community of people that actually care about you. It's not just about points. What's your name? James Lee. And what's your favorite thing about 1UP? Uh, you get to talk to um, all the editors and... Um, and look at all the games, but it's not as good as this cake. I'd like to say the community members. There's some real cool people out here. I like showing off my big video game collection. What's your name? My name is Che. 
And what do you like best about 1UP? I get to meet all the hot chicks. It's on the internet. It really is a fantastic place to be. TV. I'm your host, Patrick Norton. Got our one last viewer question from Evan. And I'm not entirely sure where Evan is, but he's out there on the interweb because he sent us an email I have here in my hot little hands. Awesome. Do you have to order replacement toner from Dell.com or can you get it from major retailers? Mm. So we actually talked about it earlier in the show, if you're just joining us, we talked about the Dell 1100, which is a new laser printer. It sells for under 100 bucks. Actually, I bought one. Actually, we just broke it as I was zealously, rather overzealously, pulling it off the table earlier. Ah, yeah, the paper tray came out. We'll put yeah, that back together. We'll put that back together. We can, it's like Legos, only better. So don't rip the paper tray out like I did. Uh, anyhow, so... What uh, our man wants to know is whether or not you can order the, you know what, I'm not going to try to do it on TV because I no, will break it. We'll fix it now. <laughs> we'll fix it afterwards. We'll fix it in post. That's a really good question, though, because... It, $65 for the laser printer cartridges. It's, it's eerily identical to Samsung models, and odds are, you mentioned it's a Samsung print engine. Would you be able to use a standard Samsung replacement cartridge, or have they worked a deal with Dell in such a way to where it'd be specific to this? Interesting thought. Actually, it's one I'm going to actually be looking up. Right now, as far as you know, we can only order them from Dell. However, we're still searching around, and I bet if we asked uh, Dell's PR department, they'll give us a genuine answer. So maybe Dell is the preferred supplier of the cartridges. But, uh, find your favorite cartridges. Use them. Yeah, right now, though, we definitely know they're available at Dell. We're going to look around and see whether or not we can find them at other resources, either other resources, other locations, other stores. It's just uh, for 99 bucks. If you're looking for a laser printer that's yeah. tiny. But uh, people want to know if they. Nice. That's interesting because do I have to mail order though? You know, if I have to call up Dell and mail order a new toner cartridge, it's not like I can run down mm. to the Office Depot or Comp USA. It's it true. It Does it come in black? <laughs> Rob shouts yes. out. You know what? Maybe we'll spray paint it black with the cry the, the amazing magic Krylon plastic oh, paints. Do. It's good stuff. Right now, it doesn't come in black. It does come in a fabulous gray. We're gonna pimp our printer next week, maybe, and paint it black. $99 from Dell, $65 for the cartridge. As far as you know, they're only coming from Dell. But you know what? We're going to find out, and we will definitely answer that show, uh, that uh, question on our webpage. DigitalLifeTV.com is the webpage. That's where the downloads are available later on tonight. And starting tomorrow, we'll have some more formats. Right now, though, Robert, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, have a lovely day. Good night, folks.